Good evening, Aquaibom State. Good evening, Nigeria. And good evening, all over the world, wherever you are watching us from. It is our privilege to come back on this series. I doubt anywhere on this planet, if there's a program like this, in Aquaibom State, we are always a face in good things. And so this gives you an opportunity, wherever you are, you're an Aquaibom person, you have interest about the affairs of Aquaibom State. It is an opportunity to speak with the number one citizen of Aquabum State, His Excellency Governor Udum Emmanuel. We call this the Governor Speaks. It's not easy. It's not been easy, I must say. In the last one or two, almost two years, we've gone several editions of this program, and today we are hitting the 10th in the series. It is my pleasure, therefore, to welcome you to this program. As usual, the entire media space in Aquabum State is blocked today for this program. All the radio stations, all the television stations in Aquabum State are hooked up to this program. And I'd like to say that the social media platforms, all our handles, are also hooked up to this program. Between now and about 6 p.m., we're going to be fielding questions with the Secretary and the Governor. We'll also give you, the esteemed listener and viewer, the opportunity to speak directly with your Governor. Your Excellency, it's a pleasure to welcome you to the Governor Speaks. Thank you, James. Thank you, Your Excellency. Uh, thank you, Kufre. Thank you, Blessing. Thank you, Egidio. Yes. Your Excellency, have, okay, His Excellency has already introduced them. To join me on the program today, I'd like to state that um, we have um, three outstanding uh, interviewers. Kufre Tuk is the managing editor of the Grace newspaper based in Aquabum City, has also worked with a lot of local and national papers. Welcome to the program, Kufre. Also here is uh, Edith Young Iba, an outstanding journalist and presenter, as well as newscaster, a seasoned um, reporter and correspondent with the NTA. Welcome to the program. Blessing, madam. Um, we'll be taking care of all our calls today. He is of the Premium Times Center for Investigative Journalism, a radio and television presenter of note. Welcome to the program. My pleasure. Your Excellency, I would like to set the ball rolling. We have a tradition on this program where you give us what we call the executive report. But before, as you do that, Your Excellency, um, it's not every one that has this kind of opportunity to be the governor of a state as proactive, particularly under your leadership, a state as a quiet state. Your Excellency, as you tell us what you have in mind, what is it like being the governor of a quiet state? particularly at a time like this. What are those things you like about this job and the things you may not like about them? Uh, thank you, James. <laughs> um, I think firing that side at the beginning, I will drag us into, and uh, probably might allow me to miss the opening remarks. Yeah. No, I want you to combine. What okay, can. I will combine. First of all, let me thank all our fibromites, those residents in the state, and all our fibromites in diaspora. It's me here again, your governor, speaking to all our fiber minds, and I'm meant to understand. Uh, a lot of people also listen. Nigerians, uh, non Nigerians, our fiber minds in uh, Nigeria, outside Nigeria, all over the world. The platform is open. Hear me sit up to actually answer your questions, interact with you, discuss the affairs of the state. This is one state, 7.2 million people. It's not a joke. We're actually bigger than some countries. So we must have some of these interactive sessions in order to make us better. So I thank all of you tuning in today. And I also want to wish some of you probably may not have heard me early in the year a very happy and prosperous 2022. Double two, double blessing, double grace, double everything for us this year. Um, please permit me so that I do not forget. I'm going to start. Um, this edition with some critical announcements. Announcement number one is that I have a maintenance training shortlist that we announced, GEMS for indigents of Aquaibo who are engineers 26 years of age and below to send them on training on aircraft maintenance. Uh, we intend to send 20. As of today, only, only five applied. You can see the list there. 
we receive from five who are engineers. And out of these five, in fact, one is already up to 30 years. So 26 and below are just, um, well, one is on the borderline. So mainly, mainly 26 and below are basically two. The one that, is at, that was born uh, 1998, and this other one that was born 1996. So please, let me open this session today. I would have loved to speak in vernacular, but I meant to understand there are a lot of uh, our children these days who do not, who are not so fluent with our vernacular. So that's why I'm speaking in English. Please, this is open only for our pagomites. Uh, all citizens of this state, if you know you are an engineer, you want to do aircraft maintenance, we want to send you on training. We need 20, and it's going to be on first come, first serve. So please let me not be accused at the end of the day. Oh, Your Excellency, you took from one senatorial district. You didn't take from another. You took from this federal constituency. We are not following that. It's on first come, first serve. As far as you are a citizen of a private state, and then you have the basic qualification for us to send you on aircraft maintenance. We are ready, but our people have not applied yet. So I want to believe that we will get these applications within a short period. Because um, very soon, in fact, on January 18, to be precise, the president of Airbus Worldwide was meant to be in a pilot, if not for that new variant of Omicron that was announced and so on. So, and also, uh, just a slight lockdown again, partial lockdown that came basically from the Middle East and so on. It would have been here. And we are establishing a very strong partnership on aviation development. And I don't want the situation where we have other people and then we don't have indigents of our private. I'm opening this up. Please, I want to shut this. I want this people to move on training. Once Airbus visits us first week in March, we are going to seal up this deal for training. We need 20 engineers, first come, first set. That's for engineers. Then for pilots, we've had a whole lot of people that uh, applied. That one, we're going to take 20. 41 apply. We're okay with that one. 41 apply. But let me say here so that before people start complaining, if you are above 26 years, you will not be I mean, you will not be considered. Because uh, you know aviation business is highly regulated. So please, if you know you applied and you are above 26 years, yield the floor to any of your brothers or sisters who would like to be a pilot. Basic qualification as stated earlier. So that one, I think we are comfortable. We have 41 applicants. We need only 20. who we'll select purely on merit because aviation business is highly regulated. And secondly, let me also sound something here so that people, James, tomorrow, so that when you hear people complain in the radio, you can defend me. The aptitude test that will select them to be trained is not set by a private state government. It's not done by us at all. The process selection, our one is just to, first of all, um, review this list, send it to, the, to those uh, that we are partnering with. So they will set the aptitude test, they will mark it, they will go through the process of selection. This is just a pre-process uh, to be handed over to them. So please, let it not be like any other recruitment. Someone will say, oh, no, 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 uh, governor did not tell me. It's not going to be done by the governor nor SSG. I want is just to collect these names, then forward to these people to be trained. We also made an announcement, number three, that OCP fertilizer ammonia plants is going to start up the development. I want, we are trying to also train some of our people as much as we can. We would also like to know, because we would also like to, as soon as possible, develop a data bank of our own people that will be useful there. I don't want something that a government can do that will be given to another person. No. Is it all new for any year? So we are trying, I'm trying to open up with this, knowing that at this time I can get the attention of everybody. Before people now start probably, after listening to me for a few minutes, people now start probably disconnecting. But at this time, it's very crucial that I do this. Yes. Then James, today, um, a lot of people have also been calling. Governor, what is happening to our COVID-19 update? Uh, should we still continue to wear masks? Shouldn't we wear again? Uh, what is happening? I think on this program today we'll address all that. Uh, most importantly, 
I don't know whether this will serve as an announcement. I don't know the questions they want to ask me in case it escapes you people. Let me make this clear. WAEG has increased their WAEG fees. Now, I think it's about 18,000 Naira per candidate, another 1,000 Naira for, uh, is it the scratch card or whatsoever, making it almost 20,000 per candidate. And we have almost 45,000 we are registering for Mabaiwa. This excludes what we are going to pay for science practicals. So if you add that up, you see that we are going to spend almost on the average 25,000 per candidate, multiply that by 40 something thousand. You know how much the state government would pay. I keep saying so. Whatsoever we spend on education is not an expense, it's an investment. But please let parents help us. We don't enjoy a situation where people register for this because it is not, the money is not gotten from the parents and they are not showing maximum seriousness. We want our students to show maximum seriousness this time around. We are targeting, it's a target. We might meet it, we may not meet it. But as of today, we were able to cross 80% pass rate with English credit in English and math. We are targeting that with all the incentives given us of today, with all that we are doing in education, please let parents also help us advise their words to take this serious. Education cannot be substituted for any other thing. We are targeting that our people should be in the league of late 80s to 90s percent pass rate with credit in English and math. So we are doing everything possible. It's not the money that is the issue, but the seriousness that we need and also let people know that we are making huge investments in education. Finally, James, in case you put this one also escapes you people. One of the reasons why I have to delay this program to be done now in February is because every year I've studied the trend in the past almost seven years now. Once it gets close to planting season like this, we have a lot of communal clashes. Please let me also advise, no matter what, at times where people die, what they harvest from those plots of land is not even, even up to 100,000 naira if you take it to the market. It does not want you killing anybody because of farm land. Please, as we're about starting a new season, dry season farming, a lot of people are clearing the bush right now. We want to say here, please, as government, we are not going to tolerate those communal clashes this year. If you have any issue, we are going to open, I'm going to discuss with my attorney general, we are going to open like a complaint box where you channel your complaint to the government. And then let's look at the deputy governor will come in and um, other people will come in to also help some of these communities. Some of them dates back to many, many, many years. You don't need to carry even cutlass against your brother because you want to go farming on a particular, uh, you know, uh, plot of land. This is the season again. Based on the trend in the past seven years or so, it's always been around this time when non tempted with complex issues, settlements. What police should have done, they won't do it. We are busy keeping, you know, uh, troops in some of these communities that have these issues. This year, we are saying it's going to be zero tolerance. We don't want that at all. Please let people try to settle amongst each other in peace. And let's live in peace. We don't want all this this year. Uh, be that as it may, you say, what are the challenges in governance? Uh, Moses, leadership has never been easy from the beginning. Uh, it did not start today. And today, permit me, I would not like to speak a whole lot of words of my own so that it will not be misquoted will not be misconstrued. I will speak more from the best leadership book. If you look at those leadership books from the beginning, it had never been easy. That's why there's a difference between those who are called and those who are the called. I've always said this. So those are those who are the called. Uh, challenges will come, a lot of things will come in and, and then they will go, but you must face it. It did not start today. From the first time till tomorrow, there are bound to be challenges. But what differentiates a leader from another is what you do. Some proactive steps, proactive measures, creativity, ideas, you're using to weather the storm. If there are no issues in life, that would be extremely boring, James. So as a leader, you must face challenges. How you take care of those challenges is what differentiates between one leader and the other. It's similar, I mean, in all ramifications. 
even you could see the challenges even in this country there was a time if people if some places if they pay salary it was a major achievement but to us here yeah, it was like a norm we had a fixed date people didn't care to know where did you get it from how did you come how did you need come i mean that's how leadership should play out so there's no point me you know trying to take so much of your time to analyze the challenges of leadership and so on no, not at all that is why also you see in the holy bible wherever you can find a king you will always find a priest because it's not easy there's no place there's no place you see a king you don't see a priest in the holy bible and that's where this thing started from that's where governance started from i don't know how many people have ever referred to the bible go and check the first part of the bible where his excellence have been mentioned <laughs> it's in the old testament so it did not start today that's why even uh, Isaiah, when he prophesied he said and the government shall be upon his shoulder he needed God, Jesus Christ, in turn too. And because also he also needed to take responsibility, you could see that they say when he was born, he had to learn humility. Because you can't save people with arrogance. You can't save people in, I mean, in pride. You must learn. Because Jesus Christ himself had to pass as a man and learn humility in order to be able to lead. James, I think I'm talking so much with the opening remarks. These are issues that I would like to come up. I'd like people to find out. We'll clarify all this COVID-19. Should I still be so stiff about these uh, COVID-19 procedures or not? Or should we relax some? I think we've already relaxed a whole lot. Yes. Where we are still trying to allow people to still cope with is wearing a face mask. I think it helps only not on COVID-19. Yeah. Uh, you could see around this uh, dry season, mm -hmm. cough is minimized if you check. I mean, I don't know others can prove me wrong, but if you check during dry, during dry season, uh, like if you go into public functions during dressing like this, you could hear a lot of people coughing. But I think the face mask is helping on that as well, not only on coronavirus. So I'm not a medical doctor, but I can keep analyzing. <laughs> James, over to you people. Thank you, Apibomites. Pibomites in Nigeria, Pibomites outside Nigeria, Pibomites in Apibom State. All our elders, our stakeholders, fathers in faith, every single person, I appreciate you all. I love you all, Apibomites. Thank you and God bless you as we start. Thank you, Excellency. Excellency, in answering, in setting the two, you have um, practically disappointed one person here. Kufre, to, uh, you had a question about Akwaibom doing well, well in Waiye. Yeah. As the His Excellency answered that, or you want to put that question again so you can throw more light. I still have uh, some issues for him to clarify. Okay, okay. Uh, right. right. uh, Your Excellency, uh, a few weeks ago, your Commissioner for edu um, Education, Mr. Sidon Sainte-Tiebe, uh, presented a report that um, Akwaibom student to Waiye recorded 78.90% in five credit uh, subject area, including mathematics and um, English. And here today you said that uh, Akwaibom we'll students, uh, yeah, you, you moved the target upward. And you also added that Akwaibom students are not showing maximum uh, seriousness. Uh, but one would wonder what magic you did within a year to achieve this. Yeah, good friend. Uh, you see, the day, you know, in those days, they say, do not, uh, you don't allow nation. you don't allow, once you try to let them know that they've done so well. Mm -hmm. You see, I remember when we were much younger, our mother was a teacher. If you are, she wouldn't like to teach you, even in the class you are, any time you come with a report card, and your position is set number three, you are 10, second. Do you know, you think your mother will just clap hands for you? No, she will tell you that. She will tell you the person, <laughs> that person who came first. Or was that person also born by a mother like, like her? So, the reason being that um, until we talk this in all over the country, I will not relent. So, I don't want these people to just believe they've done so well. 80%, you know, I, 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 if you. Uh, if you have any of these pupils that attend certain schools, you know there are some nursery schools that are so competitive. There are some even public schools that are so competitive that in an exam that is a cutoff, 80% will be a failure. Okay. It doesn't mean, uh, you know I mean, because it's all, everybody just says 50% is a pass man, depending on the kind of exams. There's an exam you go to where an average pupil in that class is 85. In that case, 80% will be a failure. So, I don't want to benchmark with those who are scoring less than eight. 
I'm charging a Bible pool. You now say that I'm not satisfied. How can I be satisfied? Because I know the potential of an average a Bible person. I know the ingenuity of our people. Look at all the competitions we've gone, science competition and so on. So why can't we translate that to YA? I don't see any reason why this state should beat us in sciences. These are God-given talents to our people. Our people are exceptionally brilliant and good. Forget it. I mean, so we must draw them out. We must challenge them to bring out the best. And if you don't challenge the mind of an average person, then the person will just also remain average. But once you challenge the mind, you see the best will come out of that person. So I know people are saying, oh, 80% is good. I don't see anything there. I'm moving towards being number one in the whole country, and that's my target. Anything short of that, because I mean, if your mother will ask you, you are, you are, you are coming back as second in a class. The person that came out first, wasn't he also even better? So those states who are beating us are bad. They are not being more encouraged than I can. <laughs> look at how much I say I spent on some of these, look at the programs, look at the encouragement we're giving this one. I think we need to also, parents are leaving this responsibility in the doctors of the parents. Let parents talk to their words. That please, don't be satisfied that you have five credits with English and math. I must also produce eight A's. I must also produce, what, I mean, our people can do it. Let's challenge them, our people can do it. I want to come up with a result where they say, out of how many people have scored eight A's, the greater proportion of them are from a Bible, public school. Oh, come on. I mean, there's nothing as good as that. Um, we are ready to encourage these people. We are ready to do a whole lot more. And you can see why so many states are rejecting youth core members. I'm accepting more. Right now, I'm almost averaging 11,000. Because I'm trying wherever the regular teachers are deficient. We, we make do. We, we just supplement that immediately with um, these uh, youth core members. So, are university graduates. A lot of them with first class, second class, apart from good schools. And these people know modern technology than even me myself. Uh, the day we did the uh, computer it was binary and those ones. Then when we were touching computer, we were doing what we call lend us. I'm sure go for your days you didn't do lend us. <laughs> lend disk operating systems. All this is don't do it again. Now it's user friendly that you play like, okay, man. We just touch, touch screen. In our days there was nothing like touch screen. We were using keyboard ultra. But now you could just carry the screen. You touch things will just be coming up. So the, that's why we are trying to bring, uh, you know, this youth core members who are also abreast with the uh, latest technology from schools to also probably complement what we are also doing with other regular teachers. So we'll continue to invest a whole lot more. We also want to whom much is given, much is expected. Ola, you have something All on right. education? Your you would still like to stay with the education sector. Thank you. Um, on the heels of the education summit, the think tank committee will set up all right. They came out with some recommendations that sure. had to be implemented in phases. Yeah. Apart from people who want to know, at what phase of implementation are we now? Um, education is not hard infrastructure, it's soft infrastructure. So, hard infrastructure, you know, it's like if they come out and say, oh, go and tie road, you can easily see road being tied. But when is a, in the, when is a soft infrastructure? This, um, what do I call it, um, uh, property, of an intelligentsia that you might not really touch physically, okay? And um, we're implementing what they recommended in the first phase. Some of them that require the fiscal infrastructure, we're also trying to make up with that. You could see, we try to look at security of the students and pupils in school, which is also one of the things we look at during the education summit. I'm sure right now, if not on any other place, if you take the UU capital city, Round. There's no school that will not fence round. I mean, that's physical what you can see. If you check, we needed to also augment in terms of quality of teachers. We hired about 5,000 teachers or more. Right now, I just gave an approval for technical teachers to be employed almost immediately. So we also want to employ technical teachers. Thirdly, we also said that we're going to set up what we call a skill development center. And when I spoke, third quarter of 2021, I said that we couldn't commence that center because we needed to bring in skills from outside the country. We don't have those skill sets here. So we were relying on some of these outside the country. A whole lot of them still are afraid to travel. 
don't see the way God is blessing us in Nigeria. Uh, even this Omicron that we said, a lot of us see it as flu and so on. In other countries, it's not flu. It's not cold. It's not Qatar. Here in Nigeria, people will tell you he's a senior brother of malaria. <laughs> we should just thank God. Over there is no senior brother of malaria. I've seen somebody who had Omicron. After the person was treated of Omicron, if you needed to see the reaction. The whole body. Terrible reaction. We are just blessed in Nigeria. So I think that has given us a little bit of setback. And that's why we now went back to Ikora Daigen. Try to equip it. If you go there now, we've done a whole lot of educational tools and equipment needed. So we are trying to do physical uh, infrastructure now, roads, few things that we needed to provide. We've already linked them now with national grid in terms of electricity. And we're about doing also standby and the rest of them. A whole lot that we're doing as a backup. So these are things that you might not see the result immediately. And also we didn't say that all the results and outcomes will be within a year or two. Mind you, it's education. So it's a medium-term plan. I won't call that long-term. I know in Nigeria, anything above five years is long-term. But in our case, we don't want to call it long-term. We want to call it medium-term. Because we want to achieve this within 10 years so that we can get it right. It's like when we also set it up in terms of sports development, people did not give us opportunity. Today, I mean, you are beginning to see, even in terms of football, you know, we started with football because a whole lot of love football in Nigeria, ah, once they are playing football, you don't know the difference between this person and that person. But still in other sports, we are coming off very strongly. We are trying to develop. We are not there yet. We set up a 10-year, you know, let me call it um, a 10-year development, development plan on these issues. And these are some infrastructure that physical um, verification might not be immediate, but you will begin to see the outcome as soon as possible. I think that's how far we've gone uh, today. Your Excellency is still talking yes, about this. So if, even if our focus is going to be on education today, it's the foundation of everything. It's still talking about education, Your Excellency. We know that um, last year, uh, government had commenced the process of recruiting, uh, recruitment of teachers to the secondary and primary schools in the state. We are very happy. I think September, the secondary school teachers started um, and are uh, serving our people. How about the primary school, Your yeah, yes, Excellency? Uh, the primary school, James, you know, primary school, when you're talking basic education, a lot of people don't know how critical primary school could be. A lot of people, you see, people just uh, underrate certain things. You need to go to specialists. You need to go to consultants in this field. They will tell you how relevant and how important primary schools could be. James, we are taking our time I told you how I went on campaign, I mean, in one of the low government areas, and I walked past the classroom, and something was written on the chalkboard there. And um, honestly, that day I felt bad. So, a primary school is key. Something you tell a child of five, six, seven, eight years. <laughs> Ask me what they used to teach us at that age today. I still remember. I still remember. So, it's very critical. We are trying to make sure uh, there are a lot of issues we see. Uh, you know, we as leaders, it's not everything we see that we come to announce on the radio. A lot of things we see that we cannot make those announcements, we can only tackle them behind. People will not know. People may criticize, people may say things, but we cannot still come out to say them. But please allow us to do proper verification of these people, their educational qualification, their training, not only what they present to us as paper, we are not going to do paper recruitment for primary school. We are going to do real staff recruitment. Staff is not just the paper. It's the fact that you've been trained as a teacher, you've gone through that training, you've passed the training, and then you've also done practice. And then at least uh, with that, we we're able to build things up because uh, we place a lot of premium on that basic education at that primary school level. I think um, very soon, I'll check with Super. You know, I, I don't interfere with all these processes as a matter of principle. So I allow them to do it. We only set standards that they must adapt and follow. I want to believe they keep to those standards. And we have a way of checking because, you know, uh, you are the one setting the exam. So you know where the marking script, where you want to start from. So we have a way of checking those standards. So I want to believe they are keeping to that standard very soon. In fact, I'm going to give them ultimatum very soon to report back and um, let's have the outcome okay. of the 1,000 teachers that they need to have.
Ohio for primary schools. Okay, excellency. Um, Your Excellency, let's move over to physical infrastructure, the road you. projects across the state. Okay. Now, a lot of persons are saying that um, it's quite impressive, the pace of walk. Some other persons are also of the opinion that you're taking advantage of the dry season and then, of course, because your administration is rounding up. But there are others that also think that it's because you've gotten the funds from the federal government. That's why you're doing this. <laughs> Your Excellency, what is the truth with regards to this? Um, well, let me, you know, let me say here that um, if you follow everything you read in the social media, I think you lose focus. Um, the real truth about the so-called reform, I think um, I'm going to pass the letter written to us by the Minister of Works to House of Assembly, so that through them, they can tell our government how much reforms we got from the federal government and how they wrote to us that we will not get a whole lot of money not refunded to us. I have the letter written by Minister of Works. Okay? Then, um, be that as it may, we will let that also come in. And I also want to believe, people listen, even the day the Senate President came to commission with you, he gave us a commitment. He said those reforms that we were not given, that will help us. So if those reforms is what they are writing in the social media, uh, why would even we <laughs> still be promised uh, that we still have a whole lot to be refunded to? I, you know, I don't follow those things. You know, to them, I read something by one of the governors who said that in 2014, 2015, they needed to make PDP government look so bad so that they would be able to campaign and take over government from PDP. If that's the essence, of some of those write-ups that people, I don't have to, I'm not on any social media platform for now because I get, I must get focused. I was elected to serve the state for eight years. I'm, I'm going to serve to the last day I leave office. So I don't, I don't get those distractions. So what's the they want to write, let them write, that's number one. Then number two, Edidion, you see, they say prophet is without honor only in his own place. Whether I put it right or not, you understand what I mean? If you ask my brother governors, people from the sister states who are also oil producing, they will appreciate your government better. They will appreciate your government better. As of today, I'm sure you are aware, I don't know whether they are counting the Supreme Court judgment that we won, which as of today is yet to be implemented. Then we can also say something. We had some gaps between 2015 and 20. 20, on even the 13 percent derivation, and nobody cares to know how much will we given at that time. How much is this gap? And even when we sat back, even as governors, we form ourselves as consultants. We sat back and say, "Hey, federal government, you've been underpaying us. That's why it's extremely difficult for local government because people don't know. Even as state government, even though it's a different tier of government, when local governments cannot pay salaries, everybody shouts on the governor." When they cannot pay leave allowance, everybody shouts on the governor. People are forgetting the constitution that I also go for salutary allocation the way they also go. And that's of assembly is not giving me anything to as intervention for them. So whatsoever we do, we just manage out of our limited resources and move to us. Nobody checks that. So we sat back and also look at this. And even this gap that we identified, ask them how many, over how many years. They say they can be reforming us toy, 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 over three years. And people are saying reform, that's number one. Then number two, federal government published recently. Let me take you on. To do from Odubani, you know this Calabar, let me leave state government too. You know Odubani, Ikori Benu Road, published by the federal government. Do you know how much the police are going to spend on that road? 149 billion. That's on one road. So when people want to talk, now look at even what we are burying on ground, starting from Sika Iro. Let our Bible might go and check what we are doing on IDB. It amounts to billions. IDB. That IDB what has been challenging from the day of creation of a Bible state till today. No politician would ever attempt what we are doing there. No professional politician will ever do it. Because you see, a politician is looking for something that they will clap hands for. Udo Emmanuel is looking for something that will keep an account before God that I save my people with all amount of sincerity. It breaks my heart whenever during rainy season, people around there, everywhere is flooded. People are complaining. 
So what's the essence of government? So I don't, I don't wait for people to, you know, clap hands on me because I'm doing something there. Go and check what we are doing there. Go and check how much we're paying on our ground at the Chicago. Go and check. We woke up one morning. It's as if I don't know what happened to uh, Mother Earth. Everywhere is caving in in Uyo, Ipa Road, Uyo Village Road, uh, and everywhere. Just go and check. And these are natural occurrences that nobody has control over. You don't control erosion. You don't know what will happen tomorrow. Nobody has control over these ravines. Anything can happen. Everything you bury there, nobody sees. You don't do that for people to see. You do that because you are sincere about saving your people in all amounts of what God gave to you. So when people just say so, let's even take them by their words. And I also saw the other day, people just took a supplementary budget and started putting figures. You know, uh, at times, you know, if you talk as a governor now, people will say, no, it's because it's a governor. How can you pick a supplementary budget? How can overnight everybody becomes a financial expert? We made a budgetary projection of so, so much. People just pick that. So nobody cares to know whether that's actual receipt or not. There is a difference between budget and actual. Nobody knows what's the variance. Nobody cares to know this budget. I mean, uh, come on, let me not go too far in that. So what you're seeing us do is because people don't want to give credit to this government that we are doing exceptionally brilliant in some of these things. We are striking the rock for water to come out. And I'll start to be quoted, there's no single local government in this state that at least you won't see our signature of a particular project. And if you drive around now, everywhere everybody's on site. Ask those people, this reform they are talking about of the federal roads happened in 2018. So it's 2018 that they gave us uh, that small amount of money that we're still chopping to today. That's what we're doing from 2018 <laughs> to today. People who are writing something on the social media, you got reform on the federal rules since 2018. Go and check. I mean, these are public records. Go and check. Since that time, whether, and even whether they're still going us a whole lot of we're not getting the reform. This is the 30% derivation, the short fall. How did it come about? His others are thanking Dr. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Oh, you did this, you did this, you did that. Because I cannot say in a public space to help us out. And even with that, they say, oh, in fact, when they brought it to the National Economic Council, they say, okay, people will get it over five years. This is something I should have gotten in one month, or we don't want it. And I say, over five years. Tell me what they call the time value of the month. As at that time, how much was the back of cement? As at today, how much is the back of cement? When people do this, they hold constant inflation. They hold constant exchange rate. States in that case is between you and God because um, it's not real. Uh, let me read this one for all of them to hear so that um, uh, let me read this one. You know, I said to them, I won't speak a word of my own. You see, in those days when we were in school, they used to teach us, in fact, you could cram it, what they used to call uh, uh, Proverbs 2020. Uh, some, some of them might have forgotten. Let me still read it for them to hear so that they know that. There's a difference between constructive criticisms and there's also a difference between an insult. As a father of the state, how many states in Nigeria can we not stand tall today? You know, when Jesus Christ was to be born, they said, oh, that little town of Bethlehem, you are not the least amongst all that princes of Judah. Today, come on, we stand tall in this country. We stand tall. One of the states with very, very good governance. One of these texts with credible governance. One of these texts, um, let me also say something here. We don't want to sound boastful. Find out how many countries, I'm not talking states, I'm not talking subnational, how many countries on planet Earth today, I mean, how many countries, even in Africa, can able to sit down 
and give them 10 a buses. We went there, even many countries in Africa could not sign to. Take it from me. They have to go and pass through an agent. Here, a subnational. We're not a national government. We don't control policies. We don't control fiscal policies. We don't control monetary policies. But even with that, out of respect for your state, call a pilot, a boss will sit down and sign an agreement with you for 10 brand new air buses. It's not a joke. It's a corporate international branding for the state. And in all the states in Africa, as I'm sitting here today, it's only a white as a state, not as a country, as a subnational. The president of a rock president of Airbus. Let me also tell some of those people that know the balance sheet of Airbus is bigger than all the countries in West Africa put together. I'll go and check. The balance sheet of Airbus is bigger than all the countries in West Africa put together. And that president, you know who that president can be. And so the president is so eager to visit a state called Apairo to see what is in this state. The only people that will do something are those who sit on the pages of uh, social media and insult the government. I don't mind doing consulting <laughs> criticisms. Right? What we don't do well, we don't just say something so that it can amount to an insult. There are certain things we just write an insult on your person. And there's something people also know. Romans 13 1 says, every soul, every soul. And when God talks about soul, it doesn't matter your age. You must be subject to governing authority. And if you don't do that, you take upon yourself some damnation. Let me also tell you something that they started teaching also with primary school. Why you see some of us respect elders till tomorrow. You will never hear us insult any elder. Since I became a governor, there is no single elder in this that I will tell you I've ever insulted in my life. Why? Because we started at this Proverbs 22. He said, if you insult your father or mother, your light will be snuffed out in total darkness. It's the only word you can go and check. New Living Translation, Proverbs 2020. So when people write all these things, just, oh, to discredit the government, also, they should also know there's another side of it too. That is not about the government, it's about God Almighty. They will get more about the Jesus if you. So um, I think we should be able to know that. So when you see us doing this thing, it's because we came passionately to serve our people. We came with an amount of sincerity to offer service. Knowing fully well, when we give an account, it's not before that. We give an account before God. It's a, it's a call. So we must handle it that way. And um, I want to believe, as of today, our conscience, all of us, our conscience are clear because we are doing the best we can. With the limited resources, limited knowledge. I've just given an example. That's the road done by the federal government. 149 billion, only one road. Then compare with how many kilometers of road we've done in the state. A whole lot of them realize thoroughly. Now, we are trying to take from Echoyman Junction, straight to Atlantic Ocean, to Alice. We reach Etina, we branch to East West Road, to Alice. You come off the airport, we take it back again, up to Okoba, to Alice. Another governor will come there and take from there back to East West Road. And we're also doing a super highway that will cut across uh, Umbo into uh, SDK up to Ibnam, that will also evacuate what we are calling. And we also bring other investors who are supporting us. Look at the amount of money we invested on road infrastructure and road. I don't think uh, we are doing badly in any way. I don't want to sound as if uh, we are not boastful, we are not blowing our trumpet. All glory to God, who has given us the ideas, who has given us the creativity, who has given us the knowledge, who has given us the wisdom to be able to do this for us. But I'll talk more as we get going. Now, Your Excellency, still talking about this road, like she said, most people have commended you. I recall that the last time we were here, it was during the rainy season, you gave the commitment that come the dry season, um, we're going to see massive uh, construction along this um, road, um, road project. And if you go around with you, I recall that um, you particularly talked if about... You go around Yes, Aquaibom, yes, Your Excellency. The one... Close to my heart is Ring Road 3, now named after a uh, former governor. There's something you said about that road, and I was watching out. Today, um, we are very impressed with what is going there. But when you consider the fact that Akwaibum is a massive construction site, a project everywhere, what commitment can you give to Akwaibum people that before 2020, May 2023, that will um, uh, uh, down... Uh, James, you can see we are doing everything humanly possible. Yes. When I put that one, humanly possible. Let me give you one of the setbacks that we have. A lot of people hear of COVID. People don't know the economic impact of COVID around the world. James, sometime last year, there was a time we could not get a, a container to even use it and import goods. 
cross check. That's why containers that used to be three thousand five hundred each now is going for twelve thousand five hundred dollars each. You don't even find it to use an import goods. If you get to airport terminal building now, they are doing the roofing and the cladding. What we are using as of today on that airport terminal building, fifty six containers came in at the same time. We claimed you know then we almost shut down on the airport and all went to our pilot. That alone is enough marketing for the state. Okay, get to the worship center. Go and see Jules Peter is working there now. And so many other things. Thank God we just finished our uh, smart building. And so many other uh, projects that we are doing. Right now, a whole lot of other projects, uh, sterling petrochemicals in East Nogoro, a lot of importations are coming in. The ammonia, a lot of importations are coming in. Boa, a lot of importations are coming in. These are things, so when you hear people sit down and say they are doing statistics of unemployment, they mention us. You now wonder, what is <laughs> employment? If everywhere you turn yourself is a construction site, are this not employment for the youth? I keep telling you, James, what they pay even to a casual laborer in some of the construction sites are more than the minimum wage of any level. What a school center person is earning there, it's more than what we even pay school school person in government. Check those construction sites. And that is not the complete value chain. Check other value chain. The lat right, the cement, the earthworks, so many other things done. And you could see initially people were complaining, oh, governor, uh, right of way, this and that. I think we're able to solve that now. We had to go back and look at the evaluation vis-a-vis -vis the current uh, prices. We would have loved to pay more. But at least that's what I'm getting from the professionals. So you could see these are things that stimulate the economy anywhere, anywhere in the world. James, let me also say something. Wherever the economy of any, I mean, any book you want to read, anytime the economy of a country is in recession and they want to come out of recession very quick, spend more on infrastructure development, spend more on capital expenditure, spend more. You see that you come out much quicker. The problem we are having is that what we do as a state is like a drop in the ocean because you know we have a uh, we have a, a, a mother which is the center so we have the center so we are just a subset out of the center so at times whatsoever we do if the center is swallowing us up the impact might not be felt so quickly but we are still trying to make sure we don't give excuses Okay, Excellency. Um, we've done um, close to one hour and 54 minutes, as a matter of fact. Actually, yes, Excellency. Yes, wow. we're, we're going to take, going to take a break. And of course, I'd like to remind our listeners and viewers that um, this program is not just about the interviewers here in the studio. It's your program. It's a program that gives you the opportunity to come face to face with your governor and ask him your own questions. And so when we come back, we'll open the phone lines. We are on a online or mobile. To join us uh, on A, you can join us on for call 090-7240-5876. Let me take the number again, 0907-240-5876. For your SMS, 0907-777-8800. Take those numbers when we come back, and um, you can have the opportunity to join us. So also like to inform you that you can join us, send your messages through all our official handles on Facebook, on Twitter. We'll take all your questions. We take a break when we come back more on the program, The Governor Speaks.
We were talking key critical issues about governance, and now um, we have one more hour to go. We ask a question, the Excellency, I hope we will talk some politics, because this is a political season. And of course, open the phone lines and allow the people to talk with their, uh, their governor. Uh, Blessed Menem, are you ready for His Excellency? Yes, okay. Can you call? Hello. Are back? Yes, yes, Excellency, we are back. Because as the calls are coming in, yes. we take the call for, in the east of our real listeners, 090-7240-5876. Hello. Hello, good evening. Hello. Good evening. Hello, can you hear me? Good evening. How are you? I can hear you very well. You're on on the Governor Speaks. You're live on the Governor Speaks. Please do what to... We lost that call. We lost that call. Yes. Please join yes. us. Hello. Hello, are you there? How about you? You're yes. excellent. But yes, what's your name? Your name? Well. Relax. You what's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is John O'Connor. I'm calling from Saudi Arabia. I can hear the government very well. And I want to thank him for talking about education because that is the only way we can get assist out of poor poverty. And the excellency mentioned that the kids in our private city in 2020 who are you um, and then you um, and um, and then shop. I'm just wondering. If we can get a kid out of poverty, why should the kids be using stock in 2022? We cannot be able to compete with a place in other countries if the kids are using stock in 2022. What can the governor do so that we can improve this? The Excellency John is saying, uh, coming from Saudi Arabia. Yeah, he's saying why our kids are still using chalk in 21st century and what can be done to you know, mitigate this? Exercise? Speaks. Please tell us your name, where you're coming from, and keep your contribution. Yeah, my name is. The time limit of yeah, my name is. My name is Mr. Samuel Efio. Mr. Samuel Efio. Please go ahead. I'm calling. I'm calling from Aruba. Nam. Go ahead. Hello. Sir. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. I want to appreciate the, His Excellency. I think we've heard uh, the program that he is projecting for the youth of the training on the vision industry is a very laudable uh, project and it's going to be an achievement a landmark achievement for him thank you hello good evening hello yeah hello good evening please tell us your name and where you're calling from you're live on the Okay, this is talking from Idoro. Please go ahead, the governor can hear you. Yes, yes I am engineer Tom. I'm still a Tom calling from Idoro. I all want to appreciate His Excellency for what he has done for our side of news. Hello, are you there? Yes. 
Yeah, His Excellency, you've done so much that uh, uh, beyond expectations. Uh, since you resumed the mantle of leadership in 2015, we've seen the giant strike, seen how we reposition of Bible uh, in the map of the nation. His Excellency, uh, I just want to ask, uh, we are very much aware that uh, um, there's an infrastructure that is under development at the uh, airport, that is the MRO. Uh, His Excellency, uh, we notice that this is a kind of infrastructure that would grow in the Cove of Guinea that would bring a whole lot of uh, uh, economic uh, development. So, Your Excellency, you've done so well in this area. And I want to ask, Excellency, what is done about the aspect of training of our viable youth in the area of uh, aeronautics? Uh, that is in the aspect of maintenance, that uh, we can integrate these people into this area of development when the project is finally completed. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I, I can take that question. Um, you know when initially, uh, it was planned that uh, we were supposed to... Uh, Reassure you, I don't know if you can be allowed to enter, but we don't also want to do a video shoot now. For the purpose of that, you rest assured. I don't know how many of you also heard the announcement last year. A neighboring country is an American government that is even helping them with the initial survey. An American government helping a whole country neighboring country of ours with a survey. Here we are in a Bible, a subnational. We are gone very far with our MRO. You need to go and check if you'll be allowed. We just refuse to be As of today, it's going to be a, a very beautiful bright. I, I, I just don't know how to unfold certain things until it's close by or we're almost signing off. But trust me, Four major aircraft maintenance companies across the globe. Two have shown major, I mean, seriousness to actually partner with us. One, to respect the other, who come, I mean, will not agree on the debt. These people are coming because we've gone far. That will be the only MRO facility in this part of Africa. I don't want to say what I mean. Done, even when there's a drop of rain. 
the amount of rainfall last year, we couldn't even do any work there, except we want that place, I mean, to just cave in overnight. That's why you go there and they are working there at night. It takes a whole lot. But uh, MRO, we are working on it. Coming back to the training, we will do a refresher course for those that were trained earlier. If you have listened to the opening remarks of this program, I started by announcing Live on the governor speaks. Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. Okay, this is Odori uh, Wataniete Tom. I'm speaking to you now. Please, you keep your keep your questions within 60 seconds, please. Okay, uh, Excellency, I must recommend you. You have done so well to the people of Akwa Basibo State. Thank you. Uh, but uh, the little issue we have here, since the mission of Akwa Basibo State, let me say so. Again, because to be more has not benefit anything from the archive from the government. Yes, yes. to this uh, incoming man fly you back. Currently as we speak now, okay, we don't have I access road. There is no access road. Your name and where you're calling from. 
Okay. Alright. My name is uh, Uke Bong. I'm calling from Ikore Bene. Please keep your questions within the limit of 60 seconds. Okay. Uh, let me congratulate or thank the governor for the last recruitment into the state secondary education. And but I want the, uh, during the last presentation of the budget, that is 2022 budget, the governor made mention of another state of recruitment into the state civil service. So I want the governor to throw more light on that. When is it coming up? Thank you. From Precious Iyanami says, Good evening, Your Excellency. Good evening, everyone in the studio. During the second and the third convocation ceremony of Aquarius University, you had made a public declaration of automatic employment for the first class graduates. But up till now, most of these graduates um, cannot get the connections to get jobs. Um, what is government doing to help them? Uh, jobs is one thing for you to take because it will be a river. Another thing that you can force the most to do. Everybody has a responsibility. You that made first class, have you made effort to reach the head of the civil service who will now pass your first class to the civil service commission? You see, for the fact that I've made the announcement, I cannot reach the I must speak to the processes. So if you have first class and you were most that set that I made that promise to, when I come for the when I get for the promotion. Please make efforts to reach the head of service. And we've told the head of service over and over again during our escrow meetings that it must also leave a line open. For them to reach him. Because after reaching him, then they will now reach the civil service commission who will now activate the process of employment. People should not think that because the governor made an announcement during the convocation. The governor will come to your house and, and deliver employment letter. You must still walk through the procedure. It's like if God promises that you are going to have a child, and you must still carry the child for nine months before the woman gets married. So, the God promise you, you will have a child. Did God revoke that promise? The answer is no. So, everybody has a responsibility. The same way you have a responsibility to carry the child for nine months and deliver, you as a student who have first class, during the time of that convocation, you have a responsibility to let us have your data, your information, and if you come up to run the time, Uh, 
Okay, John Nipple from you sent an SMS. He's asking about the 21 story building. And when the state will begin to take profit from that building, since nothing is happening after the inauguration of oh the building. You got the question I wanted to ask? Oh my God. Oh my God. Somebody is already asking for the profit on the <laughs> Well, it's a good question, John. John, as of today, we have at least four tenants in that building. We are selecting the quality of tenants that go in there. It's not meant to be open to all. It's a smart building. It's a building that you must get value for money. So don't expect profit overnight. Yeah, yeah, we're not selling uh, fast moving and consumable goods. <laughs> That's not the thing. So the one story building is not one of the fast moving consumable goods. Not at all. It's a major asset to the state that will bring a whole lot of not just in one direction, not just in the direction of rent, in all other directions. And mind you, even in Europe today, it's only UK that is opening back offices for people to go in. The city of New York is still contemplating with all, all the high-rise buildings you have in Manhattan. They are still contemplating because people were still scared whether a new variant of COVID <laughs> will come out this first quarter or not. But right now, UK are, te are, are taking the lead. I think others will follow. So some of the companies who have paid rent for that building are multinationals. So if they're multinationals, uh, they must still wait for their home office to give them clearance. Take, for example, Exomobile took just one floor for now. I mean, I know they will definitely take more than two floors. But for now, in the current issues, they have taken just one floor. So don't be in the haze on the profit of 21-story building. There are other economic values that will derive from it. Uh, as we put tenants. But I must also say, we are also not in a haste to put any tenant there. Because if you put any tenant, you bring down the value of that building. And even other tenants who would have loved to come to occupy the place, when they look at the profile of other tenants that are there, that's what also determines whether they come or not. So we don't want to water down the standard of that building by just rushing any kind of tenant. Of course, we've gotten many applications. Even as of now, there are some federal government agencies that have applied there that will refuse to give space right there because of one reason or the other. So we are taking the asset there. Certainly, we derive the full economic benefits and value of it, but we are not in a case for that profit that he's talking about. Probably, I want to believe he was talking about rent, not profit. <laughs> Now. Everything you're saying now is on hearsay. 
You can't put me anywhere. But let me also say something. You started challenging me from the Bible. And let me tell you something, good friend. God sent Moses to go and tell Pharaoh that he must let his people go. When Moses went to tell Pharaoh, there were other priests. They were high priests. They were prophets. They were bigger men of God. Why God sent Moses? Because Moses was a leader. God can only have one leader at a time to lead his people. And God speaks to that one. What should I say? He said this, you know, God was still communicating with him. But he did not talk to any other person. That's the one. Then number two. When God told Moses, God would have gone ahead of Moses in order to make sure that they did not pass through the Red Sea. He would have gone ahead to make sure they did not explain the bitter waters of Mara. They look at what happened. When they got to the Red Sea, with all those high priests. But do you know God? Everybody still look at Moses because Moses was the leader. Even at that point, it is only Moses. Also. He told Moses, "Look, check there. There's a stick. Put in that water. That water will be sweet." So, if you're taking me from that Bible perspective, how come this is the first leader God? so that you don't go into a controversial area. This one area that I don't want to make it controversial. Let me say something that people don't know. Communication between a leader and God is different from what any other person will see or understand. People must understand that. I made this statement when we were trying to set up the International Worship Center. Kofre, do you know, when I set up that International Worship Center, do you know me as a person? Let's leave me now as a governor, as a leader. Do you know me as a person, what I faced? Have you ever imagined that all witches and witchcraft came together and took me to court that were in court over that I built the worship center called a Christian worship center and I called it that we are building an altar that will speak for the children of this land with God Almighty. People still took me to God. They say they are atheists. As a result of all the witches and witchcraft came together, took a lawyer. The case is in court. They lost the first one. They went on appeal. We are in court. If you don't know, I can give you the case file. You go and check. Would you have believed that? So let me also so <laughs> let me say something here. You see, there's something people don't know. We answered that name. It's not enough for us to sit back and say this is the only state that is named after God, and we think we can ignore. It's not possible. The day we said that it is the only state, we proclaim it to. We want to be the only state named after God. We want to proclaim that. Then we don't want God to have a hand. It has gone past that level of offering. At this point in time, we've already told everybody, the whole world, we've told ourselves that this state is named after God. God must have a hand in it. We don't have a choice. Nobody has a choice. Nobody can manipulate it. It's gone past that level. Then, let me also say here, that because of that, God will always have something to say. So that I won't say something, you know, taking me into politics. Let me, I, you know, I always move with my Bible. Let me open to... Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. I read for you to hear. And so that you know some of us, uh, those things that you want to go to uh, might not necessarily be the way you're reading on the social media. Because you can't quote what you're quoting from me. It says, not for that we have dominion over your faith, but are helpers of your joy, for by faith ye stand. We are helpers of your joy. Leaders of a Bible state, the leader like my own, our case is different. Our case is different. Whether we like it or not, our case is different. Because we've already professed, God, this is your own state. Even the people that pray, when you pray, do you determine how God will answer you? You can't. So, <laughs> so I mean, there are certain things, 
that I'm starting from this point because you took me from the Bible. So you're drawing me from the area of my strength. You know, that's my best leadership book. So <laughs> you're drawing me from my area of strength. That's why I'm quoting from you. That's why I started from the Genesis, which is Moses. I mean, from the Exodus, which is Moses. Even with that, Kufreche, even though God spoke to Moses, even though Moses was doing what God wanted him to do, there were a lot of murmurings. There were a lot of complaints. Oh my God. Didn't you hear? They told Moses, were there no graves in Egypt? We would have, and you would have allowed us to die in Egypt. Ah, over there, we were even eating onions. And, and, uh, and uh, garbage. Why, why are we dying here? In the wilderness, no water to drink. But check, didn't God speak to Moses? The answer is yes. Why did God still allow them to taste the bitter waters of Mara? Because God wanted to prove a point. But I don't want to go through that because we are not in Sunday school. We are on a platform. <laughs> so you taking me through that and all this is your reading. There's a division in which party is divided. PDP. Are you sure it's PDP? Who is divided in PDP? Where is the division from? I would also appeal that some of these social media things that we read and so on is not helping us in any matter. You know I started this thing by also reading Proverbs 2020 on a way that we can do this so that we don't solve the fact of the bad. Because at any point in time there can only be one leader. It's only one day that I've just quoted something from you using the Bible that you started me with. That in the era of Moses, there were a lot of elders before Moses. There were a lot of pastors, so many high priests, so many prophets, and so on. You know, uh, Brotherhood of the Cross and Star was saying, if you're Haven't you heard it? So, uh, God will can hide some of these things from the wise and the prudent and decide who he reveals it unto. Peter is the one that got the revelation of Jesus Christ. He said, Peter, you are alone. But meanwhile, John was calling himself that he's the friend of Jesus. I hope you know that. When you are talking about disciples of Jesus, John claimed to be the friend of Jesus. But Peter is the one that got revelation of who Jesus was. Amongst the twelve, there's only one person. Outside Peter, there was no other person. There was no other person. So please, uh, let us not go into controversy about this. I'm just telling you that vote is for peace. That vote is for prosperity of this land. That my vote is for the future generations yet unborn. That my vote is not for violence. That my vote is not for violence. So it's not for the man that will come and carry gun and point on your head to grab power. Whoever grabs power by violence will rule you by violence. So I'm just telling you that my vote is for peace. That my vote is for progress. That my vote is for prosperity. That my vote is for the unity of a Kwaibom state. Kufre, I'm going to announce I'm not even going for Senate. So, I, 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 let's look at it that way. What is going on in which party? There is no party that is divided. Which PDP? This is our PDP. It's not divided anything. And I've not made any statement. I'm just saying that God, you gave me ability to make one vote. Both at the primaries and at the general election. That God, that my vote will go for peace of this state too. That my vote will go for the prosperity of this state too. That my vote will go for the progress of this state too. That my vote will go for the unity of this state too. That my vote will go for education of this state too. That my vote will go for health care in this state. That my vote will go for infrastructure development of this state. That my vote will go for the respect of a Bible of this state today. That my vote will go for the economy and economic development of a Bible state. Nothing more than that. One vote, one man. That's all. So, all those things you're saying, this one, that one, that one, they are all social media. I'm not aware of, and I've, you quoted me from Bible, I've taken you from God, from Exodus, when he started. Moses, there were a lot more rings. People don't want a lot. Finally, since you took me through the Bible, I told you many mistakes. That's the problem. <laughs> Jesus Christ was about to be born, my friend. God himself came to announce. He said, People left there, went and told Joseph. Do you know, even in the Bible, I can tell you, there's what they call the unbelieving Jews in Acts chapter 14, verse 2, when Paul Apostle preached. There were some Jews who went to unbelieving Jews to try to stir up their hearts also with the Gentiles. Go and read Acts chapter 14, verse 2. You see it. When, Jesus, when God announced that, people went to Joseph and said, Joseph, don't listen to the Holy Spirit, though. That your wife, go and a stranger. How can a woman tell you that Holy Spirit? God himself had to go back and speak to Joseph. He said, this child you're seeing here is the Holy Spirit. Don't estrange your wife. Don't let your wife go. Joseph 
The Bible says, he, he obeyed that and kept that. The same Jesus that God himself had to announce that he's his begotten son, hear ye him. The same Jews came back and said he was blaspheming. How could I have said he's the king of the Jews? They killed him. They say he was blasphemous. There was still noise and so on. Even after the Holy Spirit has spoken, there was still noise. There was a lot of noise. You might not read that in Bible commentary. Until the point Joseph had to come out and stand by his wife and say, no, this thing is by the Holy Spirit. There was a lot of noise. How can Mary, a virgin, give birth? How can a virgin be conceived? And then people forget that there was also a prophecy in Isaiah. You know, when God was trying to tell, when God sent prophet Ahaz, I mean, when God sent Isaiah to Ahaz, the king at that time, the king of Judah, and said that, look, these people are confident. There was an evil alliance, you understand, to attack Judah. God now sent. And after that, even when Ahaz wanted to that, you know, Isaiah still told Ahaz, he said, you shall get a sign at that time. Since then, Lord, you should see a sign, even with a prophecy from God. That. So, these are some of the things, they are to start with that because you took me from the Bible. If you didn't take me from the Bible, probably I wouldn't have started from that. So, these are things that people don't know. But I just want us to realize that we cannot answer. When you give yourself to God, you suffer what we call spiritual paralysis. So, we've already given, we've answered. You see, once you answer the name, your spirit adapts to that name. So, the spirit of the state has adapted to the state that is God's own state. State named after God. Whatsoever you name after that person, that the spirit of that person adapts that immediately. If you sleep now and I just walk past and shout, cool, Fred, do you know you wake up? What wakes you up? Absolutely not your name, it's your spirit. The spirit is neither young nor old. So once you give a name to something, the spirit of that thing adapts that name immediately. So the spirit of Akwai Bible said has adapted the name after God, the only state name after God. And the Bible says, God was in the face of men. So Udom Emmanuel is only saying, I have one vote. And I've counted what that my vote is for. It's for economic prosperity. It's for peace, mainly. Peace, peace, peace. Let me shout to It's for prosperity. It's for the progress. It's for unity of this place. It's for development. It's for education. It's for health care. I can keep counting. It's for more things to come so that we can create more for our people. That's the only thing I'm saying. That single vote that I have, this is how I'm going to cast out my vote. The race belongs to God. Uh, the Bible says many are devices in a man's heart. It is only the God's, the Lord's determined counsel that shall stand. Not me. So when you pray, you can't tell God how to answer you. Good friend. So let us not go into the controversy whether this one is divided, this one is right, this one is no, that's not right at all. Uh, so let's leave that for now. Just, just allow God's determinate counsel that shall stand. But it's my duty. That's why I quoted from that second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24 for you. What is my own role? That's my own role as a leader. And I must play that role because God will ask me, did you play your role? How do I have to play that role? For the joy of others. That's all. So, it's not politics in the way people are just looking at. People go ahead insulting me. What have I said? What can you quote me that I've said wrong? You can't quote me of saying anything. What can you quote me of saying now? You cannot. But I'm just telling you something now. So, uh, take it easy and um, let's allow... You see, Akwaibon people are so loved by God. I'm telling you, we are too loved by God. You see, when God loves people so much, at times, even your little child, you know a child you love so much, you refuse to beat. At times, that child is a child that is always trying to, you need to put an eye on that child very well. <laughs> a child that you love so much. You know, he said, well, God loved the children of Israel so much. So much covenant. All the children of Israel. He got to a point, they almost forgot that God loved them. He took other prophets to intervene. You know, was, there was a time that God was looking for a man to stand in the gap. I don't want to go into that one. But good friend, don't take me into the, into the best leadership book. I've read it from cover to cover. Not just reading. I, I think I have an understanding of it. So that's that. And so when we are talking some of these things, our case is different. I think there's a church I went to one year. When they mentioned that church, it says our case is different. In our case is different. 
let's allow God to rule in the affairs of men. I'll give you an example. That when I wanted to build an altar, they took me to court. Association of atheists, all the witches and witchcraft, they contributed money. I'm in court. <laughs> so tell me, I mean, who got the revelation knowledge to do that is the leader. As you are trying to do it, Yeah. I won't go through the Bible as it's been your 47. Mm -hmm. oh. No, you can go through. Uh, because uh, uh, the Bible, the, uh, the general, I mean, uh, what is it? The great commandment. Yes. He said, go ye into the world. <laughs> so it wasn't meant for anybody. <laughs> nobody has the monopoly of God. Uh, uh, let me also assure you that. Uh, then nobody come and tell you. Nobody has the monopoly of God. Nobody has the monopoly of God. a time when we were much younger. We so much, you know, in those days when they teach you, Jesus Christ did this, he talked about that, so many things. So we went to one of our teachers then. Ah, but this Jesus Christ, we like to be like him. He said, hey, so you want to be like Jesus? He said, okay. He said, go and fast 40 days and 40 nights. You, you, you'll be like Jesus. Immediately we had fasting, we all ran away. <laughs> <laughs> so you must pay the price. <laughs> but yes, please, because, yes. I, because I think... I, 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 because this COVID-19 is very important, okay. and we like the like, Quaban to know what to do um, henceforth. Your Excellency, please, before we come back to these issues, we'd like you to share some more like on okay. this COVID-19 um, things we have to, to talk about, sir. Well, um, let me say a little on this COVID-19. At uh, least so many questions have come up. People are saying, do we relax on some of the COVID-19 protocols? If you ask me, those protocols are very, very helpful. Uh, recently, we still bought a whole lot of hand sanitizers. If you check, it's also helping us in personal hygiene a whole lot. I'm not trying to create fears in people by still talking about COVID-19, COVID-19. But you see, COVID-19 has its own advantages, has its own learning points for people. Before now, a whole lot of people were not so conscious of washing their hands. A whole lot of people were not so conscious of putting fingers in their nose. At times, even when you sit in the public place, you see people just putting fingers. But do you know, that has minimized considerably now, based on what has happened on the ground. And the advent of the uh, hand sanitizers also help you a lot. Because you shake hands with people, you use those sanitizers, it helps you a whole lot. I would suggest that even for our own personal hygiene, let the protocol continue. Let the protocol continue, but we will not be so strict any longer. You can see we've relaxed on social distancing. we we'll relax on gatherings and so on. But I just want to tell people, I started this when COVID-19 started. I said that if you check a referee who is about to officiate in a boxing match, when he brings those two boxers together, he tells them something. Do you know what he tells them? Protect yourself. So the only thing we can say here is, please protect yourself. We never can tell. We might just wake up one uh, tomorrow morning and another name comes up. My duty as a governor, my responsibility to my people is to be ever ready, combat ready, so that if, not just that, that's why we are setting up this infectious disease center and trying to equip it. We are still trying to introduce more equipment that can help so that you won't just look at that. People, a lot of people don't know that lesser fever, germs, kills faster. And it kills more even than uh, COVID-19. Lesser fever. And where do we get lesser fever from? People, rats. You know at times we just ignore these rats that come into the house. That rat enters your house, uh, shares Gary with you, shares this with you, you think all is well. It's not, or probably uh, does anything. I don't want to mention what it does inside <laughs> those things. So. I, I, and people just eat it, and it, it could cause a whole lot of damage. And a whole lot of people die because of lesser fever. But a lot of people don't know that. It's probably because we don't publish those statistics. And um, it shouldn't just be COVID alone that we should be afraid of. But let's still try to obey those protocols. As of today, uh, the numbers have reduced considerably. But let me not also frighten you that as I'm talking to you right now, we still have people in oxygen at the specialist hospital. We still have people who are breathing through oxygen. We are still helping them out. 
and it's costing us a whole lot more. I mentioned the, during my last program here that one new hemoglobin cost me about 1.8 million now as a day. Now the price has increased, just one of those. So you can imagine how many we get for those people we have in specialist hospital and so on. Some of these people you try to save life. Immediately you finish saving life, they come and tell you, Governor, please, I don't have money to pay. And uh, these are citizens of Akwaibo, they are indigents, they are your people, it's your responsibility. So we look for a way to settle. So that's why we are still saying that please still maintain those COVID protocol and let people still obey it. I cannot but still overstretch the importance of face mask. I'm the governor. We look at the statistics. All those small, small airborne infections around this dusty period has reduced considerably because of this wearing of masks. Uh, COVID is still very much prevalent. It's only that uh, the present variant is not as um, severe as the other, as the Delta variant and the other ones. This one they call Omicron. I don't know this name. I'm not a medical doctor. I don't know how they call by the name too. I'm only calling the names as I'm told. But all I know, my duty is to protect lives and property. And we are trying to do that by investing a lot more into medical or something. I just signed two new, two more hospitals now to be rehabilitated. The hospital in Atmegbu, when I sent my group to go there, I learned it was completely dilapidated. So they've just, they've just signed that now. The contract is being awarded to start construction almost immediately. Same thing with Mary Spezzo. Mary Spezzo belongs to Presbyterian Hospital, but in that axis, we need a hospital. I'm also made to understand that there's a bridge that links that hospital which we have to have a look at. CEC was awarded the contract of that road. I've called them for a meeting. Let's find out why they've not commenced. So if there are issues, we can sort that immediately. I know a whole lot of them come back to us because of inflation. You know, as at the time they signed the contract, probably a price of cement there was about 2,000 naira a bag, and now it's over 5,000. A liter of diesel then was about 265 naira. Now a liter of diesel is about 408 naira. Some of these issues are things people don't know, but we sit back, we try to, you know, cross the T's, dot the I's, and get this school back. So we are so much on course to make sure we get medical facilities across to our people to protect lives, protect property, and still do the rest that we're supposed to do as government. Lady and gentlemen, James. time doesn't seem to be our friend. We have the next 10 minutes. Okay. I know security is not what you discuss in the public, but there are some few security issues I like us to treat. Number one is about the issue of um, kidnapping along our waterways. It's been recurring now. Um, What's the administration doing to improve water transport and as well as uh, enhancing safety along the water route, especially with the bad state of Calabar? Yeah, James, you remember there was a day I went to commission internal rules in Oran. An investor came up and he was ready to invest so that we can have a ferry from Oran Beach to Calabar. You see, every investor is looking at return, he's looking at safety. I keep telling people money does not go the way, does not feel safe. But all of a sudden, we discover that there are a lot of pirates in the water who are coming. I don't know where they are coming from. Some say it's from neighboring countries. As government, I want to say that as of today, we bought some gunboats. For the army, like the state government, we bought. I think uh, the last count is not less than five. And um, the what the facilities they use with those gunboats, the life vests, and the rest of them. When the IG visited last week, the IG promised us that he was going to assist us with some of those vests and some of the equipment of those gunboats. So as soon as possible, we want to deploy those gunboats to at least save. The people who want to use that water. Once investors know that that water is safe, it will be very easy to convince people to put an investment there. Yeah. But right now, all of them are complaining that they would have loved to put a ferry service there, but they are going to spend a whole lot of money trying to protect the ferry service between Oran and Calabar, probably between um, uh, Ibo Micon Hotels and also Calabar. We are looking at that seriously. And um, we are still in talk with the military agencies. James, there's something you, you need to understand, which people don't know. The commissioner of police in a state does not report to a governor. I hope you know. The brigade commander does not report to a governor. I hope you know. The naval uh, commander there is not reporting to a the governor. They report to their chiefs. 
They only work with us. They only collaborate with us. They only. But your Excellency, are meant to be the chief security officer of the state. Uh, but uh, that's our constitution. So uh, I wouldn't <laughs> overflow that here. Nigeria. But the only thing I want to appreciate the crop of service commanders that we have here is that they are perfect gentlemen and they are so committed in us working together. That's why you always see us all of the time. We hold more unofficial Security Council meeting than the one you just see us come to address the press. I think we've stopped that for a while now. We don't just do Security Council meetings to come and address the press, no. Those informal ones help us a whole lot so that we can actually discuss uh, deeply in details about this. Um, so we are trying to do that. We are trying to buy a lot of that. We also expect that Navy will be able to help us uh, in, in other parts, because when you get to deep waters, uh, Navy will be able to help us. Some of those are gone, but can't go into the deep waters. Unfortunately, uh, these are situations that are not totally under the control of the state government. But we only try to come in, we only try to, uh, to, to intervene when matters like this arise. And I want to assure you that that's just the beginning. We've done five gone boats now, mounted with everything. I can't say the details here, but I'm just telling you we've provided that now. Okay. So we are still looking at more. We've also seen that on the ground troops, we are also setting up more units. We are providing more vehicles. You know, I told you that my target was towards 100. I think as of today, we are moving closer to that target okay. so that at least this will can be able to cover more and more. I think where the federal government will also help us will be in terms of number of personnel. I hear that they want to recruit about 40,000 policemen, but they want to spread it over four years. Spreading 40,000 policemen <laughs> over four years cannot make any impact. In fact, I was happy, thinking that probably the whole 40,000 will be in one year, mm -hmm. so that at least they can, even if they give me 1,000, in addition to what I have now, uh, an average uh, pidgin English person will tell you, at all, at all, nine was pass. <laughs> so even if they give me 1,000, mm -hmm. at all, at all, nine was pass, we can just add that. Mm -hmm. And I must also appreciate the youths of this state at this point. Uh, James, our youths are so committed in keeping the peace and also securing lives in this place. At times, some of them take it as their personal something to even secure their borders, secure their territories, secure their communities. Uh, please, I want to assure them that those things, they should not think that I don't know them. It's only that I cannot go around all communities in the night thanking them. There are times I drive in the night different communities, you see different groups trying to protect themselves, protecting their property. This is what we say. And this is why I want to actually applaud them at this time and say that God will bless those who are volunteering this. Some of them, you can't enter their community any longer and vandalize the transformer. They will hold you and they will deal with you seriously. So the youths are really doing well. I also want to appreciate both the city youths, the village youths, uh, the youth uh, council, uh, all, you know, all strata of youth uh, organization or youth groups, I think they are doing well now. I could see that unity, I could see that focus, I could see that purpose, I could see that determination to actually make the state safer than what we, uh, what we could actually offer from the, from the normal course of policy. So I think that is commendable. Uh, we try to also, we keep encouraging them to do what is good and shun other vices that can actually put us in a bad light. Yes, Excellency, still talking about um, security, we do know that under your administration, Aquarium has been generally peaceful, and that's why we're having so many investors and tourists here. Now, as they build up to the election, and we know what happens during elections in this country, um, how, what is government doing to make sure that we sustain the peace? I ask this question in view of the rising cases of um, pockets of um, cultic-related activities, and then secondly, of recent uh, a silver claim group um, threatened the state um, mm -hmm. about, James, about a particular candidate. Uh, James, you know I'm a governor. Yes. A governor acts on intelligence. The governor does not act on information. So that's the difference. While the public uh, reacts, governor responds. Yeah. Uh, I don't react, <laughs> I respond. So as a governor, I'm expected to respond, not to react. And also as a governor, I'm expected to act on intelligence and not on information. So that will make the difference between me and what you're reading from the social media. Then as a build up to what you say, election year, security and so on, well, we continue to do our very best. Mm. And um, no matter what happens, the security of lives and property, the security of our borders, 
the security of our community is in the hands of all of us. Once we determine that this society will be peaceful, we'll show no form of violence and it will not thrive in any manner. So I just want to charge everybody, while we're doing our very best as government, let everybody also take responsibility. What do you do? Give us relevant intelligence on time and let's see what we can do as government and see whether we won't do something almost immediately towards that. I think with that, uh, James, we should be able to work together okay. and still achieve a very peaceful society where people can live peaceably and also enjoy and go about their normal and legal businesses and legal duties. Thank you. Being molested. Thank you, Excellency. Actually, time is all our friend. But Your Excellency, when I go back to the village, I come from the village, I live in the village, people will complain. Because roof will give our... <laughs> <laughs> so, Your Excellency, maybe one minute, in particular about tea, or peace, and now I'm going to on both politics. Same. So, okay. yeah, you don't good. Because roof no, you, you established no, that, Your Excellency. Uh, um, James, because roof I raise it down in the middle. Ado, number one, men have announcement for engineers and friends. But you are more zero qualified in Ambian near, so they have that training. Because we form both the media, different from our code, the media, different segments in our youth training and empowerment. In some of them, we talk about some exit plans for some of them. So you continue throughout this period. Then, because we form the burning point of the Damaru and the politics, election, and this, that, that. I'm a gambo, yeah. Yen, as a people, idiom, king in India's telephone, instead getting me bought on your name. I was here and I'm a man. And you could be them over these years. The memorial continues. Gentlemen, me dambo, I will have been a federal fight. I will have been a key to your fight. And we can have a fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't have a game. So that will furrow, and quarry, I don't have it. Then anyway, doctor, be a some government, governor, the father of the state. James Obone could say, "Okay, for this country, we want to move away. We want to move state of the state. We want to move away from the state of the state. We want to move away from the state of the state. We want to move away from the state of the state. We want to move away from the state of the state. We want to move away from the state of the state. We want to move away from the state of the state. We want to move away from the state of the state. Ubunne could say, "Ah, Baba, tell me how state jumped over the past 23 months. Take my salary, get this country. You put this on, even if I carry the tear on you. But again, you know, me too, boy. Fra fra, who is going to expire? Fra fra, boy. One boss going to die. Attack on the tongue, 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 tongue. Iba, ya ubunne, who is going to move over? I do not know how to do my car. We follow the way to get rid of them. Iswa mono, who is going to walk pain? We go for no to get rid of them. But I do not know how to do my car. So we saw on you. We go to the end to get this song. Baba, I'm dying. Is on over my dad over 80 years. We don't want to see our people again. Oh my God! Is on government again. He banned drug dealing. Young drug dealer. He goes through for under me. Young drug dealer. Get rid of politics. I'm a good boy. But I was saying no matter what you do, tomorrow. I'm from the front row. You don't from what they get. Yeah, you know they bring bomb. Yeah, that's what no one have. Get what I get. Who was on some again? This on me boy again. Yeah, you know they nam. Oh, bono, papa. And when we are humble, we are saying, "I am standing in the middle of the ISO accord. I am going to find a new army. Then we will find a new country. From the beginning, we have been steering. We are going to find a new country. 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 Kami di awak sedia mai kain awak di mana kain kita pernah ideal motor di bawah, busnya nuwa bah. Dia buat nyuntu yang awam, buat kebosan awam manis awam tu dekat bayi swam. Awam hari awak cuti swam tu, emak buat mana awak cuti dekat musuh itu, because of itu tu yang awam. Atau awam yang cuti tu yang awam, busnya dok. Ia awam milioner. Can you compare that you umur wo, James? So you try to respect umur wo. Kenyang kenyang wo kenyang wo dunap. Eh ini nampak macam mana kau baik biar wo? No, not at all. We don't want to condone that this year. Yeah, I told you one game. I put a man who can't go over any song food. It's a more good old it be, but give me the song food. Yeah, I try the fast track it be do. So that be be some other issue. Please go over benefit, go over any camp at the world because of a new tumble. It is very, very important to me because maybe you don't see it, but 
last year. I was all community. I remember we were taking it to one. At the end of the day, I didn't want to get one. We talked about that here. So, get the pedro of this year. So, I'm going to go to the new number very soon, as time permits. Get the media this program. Thank you and God bless you. Your Excellency, we want to thank you very much for finding time to do this. And um, the tenth in the series, out of your very busy schedule, you are always here. On behalf of my colleague, school friend, took blessing, Menem, and Edion Iba, we thank you so very much for creating this opportunity for quite people to interact with you. And in a very special way, we'd like to thank the Secretary to the State Government, Dr. Emmanuel Lekouen, with the other government of officials here, the Commissioner for Information, uh, Mr. Ini, Comrade Ine Melbourne. We have the, uh, the Chief Press Secretary, is also here, Mr. Kerry Tudo. We had the um, heads of some other uh, radio station and TV station who came here, the General Manager of uh, Kwaibo Newspaper Company, Mr. Omoi, the DJ of the KBC, who led a team of all the radio stations. I hope I can have time to mention their names. We had AKBC TV, NTAU, Spectrum TV, Radio Aquabo 90.5 FM, Planet FM, Comfort FM, Inspiration FM, Exile FM, Passion FM, Redemption FM, Premium FM, Mix 88.7 FM, and remembering Dolly Popman, who helped us in the technical areas, and Heritage FM. Unio FM, and in fact, all those online, Solomon Ayo, who led the technical team in that direction. We want to thank everyone who helped us to make this program a great one. And in a very special way, we thank the mother broadcasting station, uh, AKBC, led by Pastor Nietu, and every technical hand that assisted to make this program a success. My name is James Edith. I thank you, and I thank His Excellency the Governor for this opportunity to share this moment will acquire from people all over the world. Kufre. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And Yudi? Thank you, Excellency. Uh, madam? Let's maintain the peace in Akwaibo. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you, Akwaibo Mike. Nigeria and the diaspora. God bless you all.